everyone. We are the COVID-19 Research Group and our advisor is Dr. McMahon. So our overall research is essentially we wanted to create an algorithm which would take into account the demographic data, including someone's age, race, and ethnicity to determine the severity of COVID-19 in an individual. A prior work that we looked at was an NYU study that looked at different biomarkers um, and using an AI program, they use that to determine the likelihood of a patient to, to in de developing COVID-19. Next, our basic methodology is that we would input a person's demographic data, like their age, gender, race, and ethnicity. And based on that data, our algorithm would generate a risk approximate. And using that, we would determine the person's risk of dying from COVID-19. So now for our current research. So we emailed over 50 hospitals for data. We only heard back from 17 of them and we ended up with 11 data sets to analyze. So we began to organize the data sheets um, by three major factors, age, gender, race, and ethnicity, because we found that these factors overlap the most in our data sets. So for the data analysis portion, we converted each of the three factors in the in each of the data sheets into histograms. So we did this because a lot of each individual data set had their own individual method on analyzing the data. So we did this to compare amongst the data sets, um, do some comparative analysis amongst the data sets of the data, I guess. So for example, the age data, um, there, there are different age ranges that um, they have. Um, this one specific, this specific data set has a 10 year age range. Some had four year and some had eight years. I don't know, there could be multiple. Um, is there age overlaps? We could predict that the age, those age or ages would be the most likely for contraction of COVID-19 or death by complications of COVID-19. So for our results, we found that ages 29 to 30 years old were the most likely to contract COVID-19 and individuals ages 79 to 81 years old were most likely to die from catching COVID-19. In gender's case, the results were more ambiguous. Females had a slightly higher chance of contraction than males. Males had a slightly higher chance of dying by COVID-19 complications. For race and ethnicity, it was even more ambiguous. People of Hispanic origin had the highest chance of contracting COVID-19 the, the death-wise, though, people who are white had more higher chances of dying from COVID-19 complications. So for our algorithm, our algorithm works based on probability. We take in demographic data such as race, gender, and age, and with each type of factor, we have a base risk approximate. That is then taken in each subsection of a factor. For example, if cases in California were 0 0.5 million and the U.S. has 22 million cases, Californians would have a one out of 44 chance of dying. With basic fractions for each subsection of risk set into place, we created basic dictionaries and if statements for each factor. Each of the risks based on the individual factors list are listed, and then the factor risk fractions are averaged to provide a total risk of dying from COVID-19. That's where a risk approximates come into play. To generate these, we use the basic standard deviation algorithm to increase the accuracy of our data. So for limitations and future steps, uh, we did not receive enough biomarker data. That was one of our first substantial limitations. The only data set which we had individual biological factors is a data set from China's National Biochemical Center. So if we had more time, we could consider pursuing similar international data sets with biomarker information. Um, receiving more data, though, would require to us to have the proper permission to obtain due to issues of anon anonymity. There is also the limitation of location. So a lot of our data was specified for specific counties of the United States, which made um, the demographics a bit skewed. So for instance, two of our data sets came from California's Bay Area region in which the demographics were are very different from the rest of the country. So this may have caused some possible skew towards Hispanics being more prone to contracting COVID-19 because the population of Hispanics in the Bay Area, as we all know, is higher than the rest in comparison to relatively to the rest of the country. So these are our references and thank you for listening.